Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wherever you are, whatever the time zone you may be, thank you for joining me and listen to Coffee Time. Once again, I prepare iced coffee for you and for me, warm coffee. Quick review of last episode. After pointing out the wrong ways to pray with the wrong motives, Jesus warns us sternly in Matthew 6 day not to be like these religious people. Do not be like them. Then, Jesus taught us the proper godly way to pray to God with the proper motives and perspective and even with proper order. Matthew 6, 9-13, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The Lord's Prayer begins with our Father in heaven. In English, translate translates our Father in heaven, but in Greek, it reads, Father are in heaven. And Jesus is teaching us, rather he's blessing us to call out the creator of heavens and the earth as our Father as we begin to pray this most important prayer. In short, Jesus taught us to pray to God with the proper motives, perspective, and order. Then why was it necessary for Jesus to teach us the proper godly way to pray with the proper motives, perspective, and order by warning us not to be like them? Who are these people at the time of Jesus that Jesus taught us not to emulate? Jesus was referring to religious people. But before we can get into religious people, let me explain four types of people in the world we already talked about. There are four types of people in the world. I'm not talking about men, women, young and old, which make up four different types. But I'm referring to four types of people from God's perspective. First group, people who never met God. Second group, people who met God once, but not continue to meet and fellowship with God every day. Third group, people who met God and continue to meet and fellowship with God for their own selfish purpose. Fourth group, people who met God continue to meet in fellowship with God every day to live for God. Among these four, we already covered first two groups last time. In case you missed it, I strongly recommend you watch Listen Up Coffee Time episode number 90. Then, who are the group, uh, who are the people in the third group? Third group are people who met God and continue to meet in fellowship with God for their own selfish purpose. These people have met God and continue to run to God to meet and fellowship with God. Therefore, on the surface, they may look like good Christians. However, when you examine their true motives, they may have a quite different and even appalling their motive. Their appalling, uh, their motives may be quite different and even appalling. These people are what I call religious people. Let me explain. Some may run to God for their selfish financial gain, such as completely non-biblical teaching of prosperity gospel. People have been using this unbiblical and appalling terminology, prosperity gospel, which is frankly very offensive for this is no gospel at all. It's simply self-centered religious acts for their own selfish gain. The word gospel means good news for everyone and must glorify God for He is the greatest news for everyone now and forevermore. But using God for their own selfish financial gain may be good news for some but not for everyone and will certainly not bring glory to God for it. For it would reduce God to be nothing but the genie in the bottle. Who are these religious people? They're so-called naming claim group or word of faith movement group. Yes, they may attend church and may look like real Christians on the surface, but they're religious people that Jesus warns us not to be like. I may be simplifying a bit, but they may teach that God would bless you no matter what, even if you don't repent even if you live for God and you live according to your own desire. For God just loves you so much and will grant all your wants and desires no matter how selfish and twisted your own desires may be. This so-called name and claim group or Word of Faith Movement group have huge following for it is in our human nature to be selfish and to achieve this selfish desire, they may even use God to satisfy their own twisted desires. How to distinguish them? 
Oftentimes, they don't teach or even mention important biblical doctrines such as the cross, the blood of Jesus, his sacrifice, repentance, living for Jesus, and so forth. Their teachings and beliefs don't require anything of ourselves such as sanctification, living as a salt and the light of the world, living as a children of light, living as the witness of Jesus. But all you need to do is what they teach you. All you need to do is just come to God and ask and claim for what you want, when you want them. And God will just simply grant them without asking you anything in return. For God just wants you to be happy and be prosperous. Because their teachings and beliefs suit our selfish motives, friends, they have a huge following. All this may sound like good news, but it's no gospel at all. For it reduces the Creator, heavens and the earth, as your butler, as your valet, as your gin in the bottle, who exists to grant your wishes and bless you no matter what. For God just simply wants you to be happy and prosperous. That's what they're claiming. In short, the teachings would elevate you as the Lord of your life and reduces God as your servant, as if God exists for you, to serve you, not the other way around. Just simply believe and speak it out, and God will grant all your desires. And this kind of unbiblical teaching, they mask this unbiblical teaching as the Word of Faith movement. Do you see why I'm so appalled at these types of teaching? Yes, they do attend church. And yes, they do want to God to meet in fellowship with God for simply selfish reason, as if God doesn't see it or doesn't know it. These are religious people. Jesus warns us not to be like. On the other hand, some may run to God and meet in fellowship with God out of fear of punishment if they don't run if they don't live out what they were considered to be religious life. These are what I call legalists, and these are also religious people Jesus warns, to be not to, warns us not to be like. They may have a wrong impression of God as the cosmic bully who's watching us so carefully and scrutinizing everything we do just to punish us when we go out of line. Their image of God is a harsh lord, a taskmaster, a slave driver, a suffocating religious figure who chokes the joy out of life, not the loving father and certainly not Abba Father as Jesus taught us. There may be no joy but just misery in serving God, yet they serve God out of fear that they may be quick to judge, and out of fear, and these people may be so quick to judge and condemn others as holier than thou types of attitude. Yes, friends, God must be honored and respected no matter what. But these people honor God with their lips and their mouth only, but oftentimes not with their lives. And many times it's obvious on their face. There seems to be no peace on their face but rigid fear, but they have a wrong impression of God. Of course, I know I'm simplifying this group of religious people. But you and I know many people who are like this, and perhaps you are one of these, for you grew up in a, this type of family. These are the people that Jesus wants us not to be like in Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. In this short passage, Jesus warns us about the wrong ways to pray with the wrong motives. What are they? Way? What are they? pray in public, standing in an open corner in the church to be seen by people. Pray to, to show up how well they pray to receive praises from people. Pray with many words to show how religious, how knowledgeable they are. Pray with the people in their mind rather than God in their mind. Pray to be seen by people rather than be seen and heard by God. Pray with the belief that many words are required to be heard by God. 
praying, praying, keep on asking God about what you want without acknowledging that God already knows what you need before you ask Him. Praying, praying, naming, claim what you want when you want them and using God as your personal valet, as their personal valet. Pray and pray out of fear of God, but not out of loving respect. Jesus points out the way so many uh, so-called believers or religious people pray with the wrong motives in his time. But unfortunately, after 2,000 years, it's no different even now. In fact, with the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray by having the godly paradigm shift to acknowledge God's absolute lordship firmly established in your heart, which is the reason why we spent several episodes on this important topic in the past. Friends, please meet God and please have the right understanding of our God. Will you please give God a chance to prove to you how wonderful and loving He is? Please, please don't use God as your personal valet. And please, please stop these appalling practices of naming claim and appalling practices of a word of faith movement. And please, please surrender and repent and start living for God and living for Jesus as a real Christian. Friends, there's a simple biblical formula for not only for this third group, but for us all. What are they? You already know. Just Jesus, surrender, plus repentance equals restoration. Amen? Then who are the people in the fourth group? i explain to you next time. As we close, I have a daily homework and realization application. Daily homework first. Please watch today's episode at least a few more times and please share with others. And the realization application? Friends, let us begin anew by asking God to meet you and reveal how wonderful He is. Please stop these appalling practices of naming claim and please surrender and repent and start living for Jesus as a real Christian. Would you mind repeating after me as I lead you to a simple prayer? Precious Father, please forgive me for using you as my personal valet as my personal servant to name and claim what I want, asking you to make it happen. I am so sorry. Please forgive me for this horrendous, horrendous act. And please meet me and please help me to know who you are and start having respectful relationship with you. Please forgive me, and please help me to start anew. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen up, Coffee Time is found on Just Jesus YouTube channel, and I want to invite you to grow together as we listen to the Word of God, to the Word of God. Everyone, we love you. Hold on to Jesus, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. I'm the sun, and I'm your